A nation is using a dragon in sieges. How could they neutralize ballistas without putting the dragon in danger? Some time after successfully capturing a dragon, Nation A goes to war and brings the newest pet with them. For various reasons, the dragon is irreplaceable and they can't afford to lose him plus he has human intelligence, so he'd probably freak out if they sent him into possible death. Thankfully, the dragon's life is only threatened by these specialized ballistas, called scorpions, and only when the dragon is flying low enough to be in the effective range. Though he has to fly that low and simply being there is enough to make him panic and a scared dragon is the most dangerous dragon as in liability. Scorpion Sare lighter, but still a mobile siege equipment with the maximum range of 460 meters. The dragon is safe at maybe half the distance, so 230 meters, without accounting for gravity. Reloading times have been improved, it's easier to move the weapon around and it also has a greater degree of freedom. Other than that, consider it a standard Roman ballista. A singular scorpion is usually not a problem, the dragon could simply just play with the operator, making him trace his path until he, the operator, dies of cardiac arrest. However, scorpions are usually plentiful and come mounted on the walls of the castle, with some located hidden in the bailey. The dragon. Alignment. Neutral angsty. Size. 2 meters at the shoulders, snout vent length is 5 meters. Flight speed. 16.3 to 24.9 meters per second gliding. Breath weapon. Concentrated, 0.1 to 0.2 pico henries sulfuric acid, fine grain spray. The dragon's proteins are stabilized with acidic residue, making him very, but not completely, resistant to the acid. Effective range, 6 to 9 meters. Carry capacity. The dragon can't carry a lot of stuff with himself, even a skinny human can cause some discomfort. So, one has to render most scorpions non-operational to use the dragon. For this purpose, I wanted to create the Anti-Euron Task Force ATF, which is tasked with neutralizing scorpions. And this is where my brainstorm wore off. I don't know how to efficiently deal with and only with the aforementioned scorpion ballistas. The dragon can be used, as long as he isn't in the 230-meter danger zone. Night raids. Prior to radar and guided missiles the greatest threat to aircraft were anti-air guns and flak cannons. These weapons were of course ground-based and aimed without the benefit of computers. This is why World War II bombing runs were often at night, because the AA crews were dependent on spotlights to see the incoming planes at night. Your Dragon has a massive advantage in this scenario because there simply is no spotlight equivalent in the Middle Ages. The Dragon can fly in the dark and simply not be seen until he is extremely close. So close that he could swoop in and drop incendiary material inside the castle walls behind the ballistas before he could be spotted. If you don't believe me just consider standing next to a campfire late at night and trying to look for things 500 meters away. A bonfire just can't replace a spotlight. Another night raid tactic is the insertion of special forces. The night before D-Day U.S. Army Rangers parachuted into Normandy to capture bridges and destroy artillery in order to assist the landings. So you could have a team infiltrate the castle and destroy as many ballistas as possible. The dragon could also serve solely as a distraction for the ballista artillery, and the true damage could be done by the infantry assaulting the walls. In this scenario the dragon would merely be distracting the enemy and serving as psychological warfare.